In its final report on the destruction of World Trade Center Building 7, NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, went out of its way to avoid investigating the use of explosives. Their sole rationale for not investigating explosive use was the supposed lack of sufficiently loud sounds. NIST computed what they claimed would be the minimum loudness of an explosion that could sever column 79 with a single blast. Then they claimed no observers detected explosions as loud as their predictions. This size blast would have produced an incredibly loud sound that was not recorded on videos of the collapse nor reported by witnesses. On the basis of this artificial threshold of interest, they swept aside all evidence of actual explosions and concluded that no explosives contributed to the destruction of the building. We did not find any evidence that explosives were used in the collapse of Building 7. Yet there was voluminous evidence of explosions. Uh, here's one of the guys who can tell you I'm okay, all right? Here, hold on. You want, call your, you want to call your mother or something? You heard explosions, like ba boom We just heard one more explosion. That's about the fourth one we've heard. Craig Bartmer was a policeman who was near Building 7 as it started to come down. It was nothing I would ever imagine seeing in my life. You know, the thing started peeling in on itself. And I mean, there was an umbrella of crap seven feet over my head that I just stared at. And somebody grabbed my shoulder and I started running. And the shit's hitting the ground behind me. And uh, the whole time you're hearing thoom, 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 thoom. So, I. <laughs> I think I know an explosion when I hear it. <laughs> a few blocks up West Broadway, looking toward the World Trade Center in the distance, Ashley Banfield was conducting an interview for MSNBC. You were just uh, told by police that you should move out of your... The mic was uh, set to pick up speech a few inches away. Um, From the involuntary see, startle response, have... Oh my God. we know explosions are being heard. However, listening closely, we discover that the microphone did indeed pick up the sounds of explosions, but very faintly. Turn up the volume. Listen for a low rumble in the background. You were just uh, told by police that you should move out of your um, apartment, Fabiana. Yes. You've got Carolina here. Yes. Um, they, they advise us to leave because we have... Oh, my God. This time, the sound has been filtered to emphasize low frequencies. Listen for booms like a bass drum in the distance. Um, in fact, you were just uh, told by police that you should move out of your um, apartment, Fabiana. You've got Carolina here. Yes. Um, they, they advise us to leave because we have... Oh, my God. Here is a different version filtered to emphasize the mid-range sounds. The bass drum is gone. I would describe the blast sound like a train on a bumpy track. You were just uh, told by police that you should move out of your um, apartment, Fabiana. Yes. You've got Carolina here. Yes. Um, they, they advise us to leave because we have... Oh, my God. Here's the original sound again. You were just uh, told by police that you should move out of your um, apartment, Fabiana. Yes. You've got Carolina here. Yes. Um, they, they advise us to leave because we have... Oh, my God. Look behind us. Please pan in this way. Please be careful of your baby. This is it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No. No. If you didn't hear the blast... Back up, use earphones, turn up the volume, and listen again. There were two blasts, followed by seven more, regularly spaced all in two and a half seconds. Craig Bartmer's testimony may come to mind. And, uh, the whole time you're hearing thum, 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 thum. I think I know an explosion when I hear it. <laughs> when we hear the sharp, regular series of sounds in the background, the building has not yet started to fall. When we hear the reporters say, this is it. This is it. The building has not yet started to fall. The fall of the building corresponds to the crescendo in the crowd response. Here is another street scene with the building in full view. The crowd responds almost immediately as the building starts to fall. This occurs just after the reporter says, this is it. This is it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Therefore, oh the blasts we heard occurred seconds before the building started to fall. When Ashley Banfield says, this is it, it is because she has been previously told to expect Building 7 to come down. The brown building, the tall one, is number 7 World Trade Center. I've heard several reports from several different officers now that that is the building that is going to go down next. 
Back in the studio, the anchor, Brian Williams, not only had foreknowledge of the collapse, he had a ready explanation. What we've been fearing all afternoon has apparently happened. We were watching number seven World Trade, which was part of the ancillary damage of the uh, explosion and collapse of the other two. Just as Ashley Banfield was told, Brian Williams was told, there is indeed evidence that even the top fire officials were told. We are on the phone with uh, New York Fire Department Lieutenant uh, David Restuccio. Lieutenant, where are you right now? I'm at the corner of Norm Northmore Street and Greenwich Street. Can you confirm it was number seven that just went in? Yes, sir. Uh, and you were you guys knew this was coming all day. We had been had we had heard reports that the building was unstable and that it eventually would either come down on its own or it would be taken down. Those in control of the story were planting the official narrative in our psyches in real time as events unfolded, using the press and even the fire and police departments as their unwitting agents. We are getting information now that one of the other buildings, Building 7 in the World Trade Center complex, is on fire and has either collapsed or is collapsing. And clearly those fires continue to burn at about 4.15 Eastern Daylight Time. Building number seven was going to collapse. That appears to be what has happened so now. One of those smaller buildings just fall to the ground. We had heard earlier that it was structurally unsafe. We're getting word from New York right now that another building has collapsed. I understand that this is a 47-story building. Information, of course, take a look at that right-hand side of the screen. It's going okay. down right now. There it is. Yep. Right down right there. Uh, this is not uh, from an explosion or an aircraft at this point. From our knowledge, uh, the information that we have is that this is a building that probably was incredibly structurally damaged. NIST is being dishonest. That would have been an incredibly loud sound, and that sound was not picked up by any of the videos or witnesses that we have talked to. NIST was lying about no testimony of explosions. There was both testimony and recorded evidence of explosions. However, NIST discounted any evidence of explosions that did not exceed its artificially contrived threshold of interest. The minimum sound level of interest as determined by NIST was based on a blast of RDX, one of the loudest explosives available, large enough to break a major column outright with a single blast. They assumed no efforts at noise abatement, complete transmission of the sound to the outside air, no absorption or blockage of the sound along the path. And who knows if they assume the use of an efficient cutter charge or if they simply figure the effect of a bomb planted beside a column. They don't say. Their sole reason for doing this calculation was to create a pretext to sidestep any actual investigation of explosives. Why would NIST or anyone else choose to exclude from its investigation any evidence of any explosions related to the destruction of the building? A reasonable investigator might suspect that explosions could have been used in many different ways. They could break connections rather than cut directly through the largest columns, or use silent incendiaries to weaken the columns. Ruling out RDX does not rule out the one explosive that was most likely used, nanothermite. Nanothermite can be tailored to control the sound level by adjusting the particle size and including additives. Nanothermite might be new to the public at large, but many of the scientists at NIST had expert knowledge of and experience with nanothermite. Most importantly, independent scientists have found actual remnants of nanothermite in all of the World Trade Center dust samples they have examined. Despite NIST's intimate knowledge of alternate explosives with radically different acoustic properties, they rigged their calculations to predict extremely loud sounds and then singled out sound level as the sole criterion for what constituted a credible hypothesis. On this basis, they rejected eyewitness testimony, dun, 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 dun. inconvenient recordings, <laughs> boom! One more explosion, oh my god. And cleverly sidestepped even looking for explosive residues, evidence that explosives were in fact used to bring down World Trade Center 7. No honest scientific inquiry would ever be conducted in this way. But then, as we have seen repeatedly, the NIST report was not an honest scientific inquiry.